Okay, let's get going on this one here. Uh, as you can see, this is video number 34. Today is 4-6, and I'll dedicate this video to doing the, uh, the assignments that I gave you on Thursday. So we'll start with the first one here, and this is number one. Quickly make a cylinder, and the circumference is equals 90 pi, and the height equals 12, and you're required to find the volume. Okay, so let's um, do the problem quickly. And you should be able to do this kind of stuff now. Um, I'm counting on you to be able to do this. It will be on your upcoming test, which we'll go into more detail later. So let's see what we have. Yet again, we have um, 2 pi r equals c. So 2 pi r equals the c that we put here, which is 90 pi, of course. Without the pi, we grab a calculator. Canceling the pi, dividing by 2, and r equals 45. A relatively big number, but I told you to use calculators anyway. All right? So, um, okay, so here we go now. And we're going to um, do the problem out. And we have uh, v equals pi r squared. So this might be considered a uh, calculator problem since r is such a big number, uh, times uh, 12, which was the height. And I put that on my calculator, and I come up with uh, 45 squared times 12. Remember the pi. So there you go with a big number. They like to do that kind of thing occasionally. And there's your correct answer. Okay? So uh, we consider this taught. Uh, you should be able to do these problems. You'll see them on your upcoming test. All right, we turn our attention immediately to um, number two. And again, number two is something I've been doing with you for quite a while now. So number two, we quickly draw uh, some sort of cone-shaped object. And we say the diameter is 30. And here we say the slant equals 25. So immediately I fill in the data. R equals 15, the slant equals 5, and I draw my perpendicular bisect. It's been explained many times. So here we go. It's um, 25, 15. So there's the 15. Yet again, there's the missing number. There's the 25. This could be done on a calculator as well, and the missing number is 20. So anytime you see a slant divided uh, that's a multiple of 5, you can easily fill in the numbers without a calculator if that's your choice. And now here we go again. It's uh, one-third pi 15 times 15 because I'm anticipating getting rid of the uh, 3 times 20. And there we have a problem, an easy problem. And when I put everything together, uh, 5 times 15 times 20, you should come up, if I didn't make a mistake here, with 1,500 pi. But even if this isn't correct, you should thoroughly understand what we're doing now. Uh, this has been taught to you. So we're going to move on, expect it on your upcoming test. All right, so now we turn our attention uh, to number three. And number three uh, enters into our new topic. Uh, we'll see a lot more of that, a lot more calculator work. A lot more stuff that we want to be able to do uh, with radicals. There'll be a lecture on that today. And here the slant is 7. So let's just pause for a second for the weaker students. 7 has no Pythagorean triple attached to it. Okay? Pythagorean triples come in different types of forms and shapes. I mentioned that to you once. But the only two or three that we're, uh, we're used to uh, don't end in a 7. So we know that the answer is going to be in radical form by definition. So the radius is 3. We never forget to do that. And now 
we write out what we're going to do here. And there we go. Uh, as explained before, I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Eventually, you can turn this into mental math. We're looking for x, which we're calling the height of this perpendicular bisector that allows us to do this. So I call it x squared plus 3 squared. It doesn't matter if you plug in in the a or the b. And the c squared, of course, is 7 squared. I immediately do the math that you've been taught before. And x squared equals 7 squared um, minus 3 squared which of course is x squared equals 49 minus 9, so x squared equals 40, and x equals radical 40. Um, going to be a lesson on this today, but I'm going to pause here and ask a very uh, reasonable question. Do you think you can simplify this without me giving you a formal lesson? That is, what is the biggest perfect square, if it exists, that can uh, factor 40. Well, here it is. x equals 4 times 10, because 4 is, a ra uh, 4 is a perfect square, as you're aware of. So it follows cutting a step out since the um, square root of 4 is 2. The answer here would be 2 radical 10. Like I said, I'll amplify this today, uh, later in the day. And there we go. So now we can easily do the math uh, v, because it was defined V, obviously. It's in your notes anyway. So V equals one-third times three times three. There's the square times uh, two radical ten. And one of the threes canceled. Three times two is six. So the volume equals six radical ten cubic units. Hmm, how common these guys are and how important they turn out to be. I'll circle it. Hopefully you got that one. There'll be more uh, down the road so you can do these things. Okay, i uh, pause there for a second. I hope you're starting to understand me. I erase this work now because after all you can always stop the video and play it back again. Uh, in various ways you're stuck if you're uh, interested in learning this math. And now we go to number four. And again, it's a, a, some sort of a cone object. And this time we're given the volume is 96 pi, a half in terms of pi. They tell us the height is 8. And now we have to find them all. Okay? And uh, there'll be more of this calculator work seems to be the way that they want to go. All right, so here we go again. We have that uh, 96 pi equals uh, one-third pi r squared, which we don't know, which we're going to try to figure out, uh, times h. And h is 8. Okay, so there we go. And um, let's see what we have here. Uh, okay, so now uh, we have to um, get rid of the 3 and the 8. Notice that 3 doesn't divide into 8. These are co-prime numbers. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 96 pi. And then I'm going to divide by 8. So I'm cross-multiplying here. I'm dividing here. Eighth graders should be able to do that easily. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, again, you slow the video down and you watch me do it. I won't waste my time. Pi's cancel here. So now um, we go into the math here. 8 goes into 96 12 times. Or you can reduce if you like. Really no need for it. And it's 3 times 12. The 8 disappears. Again, 8 goes into 96 12 times. And um, r squared equals 3 times 12. 36 equals r squared. Can you still see it? Yes. And put the hat on both sides. And r equals 6. Easily checkable. If you plug in the r here, you'll get the same answer. If you 
check over here. And I leave that to you. Uh, most of you should be able to easily uh, do these problems without any uh, trouble. And again, uh, calculators are welcome if it makes the work easier for you. As you see, I'm basically used it once so far, uh, but you're welcome to use them. Your test will allow you at all times uh, to use calculators. It will be considered a calculator test. Not all problems lend themselves to calculators. Keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so we're getting close to the time frame that we have here. Here's number five. Here's a sphere. And we take a look at the sphere. And we told that the volume is 36 pi. And obviously, that since there's no H here, uh, we're asked to find R. And here, uh, I bring you back to uh, work that we did back in November and October, where you expected to find perfect cubes. Over here, I'll list some of them. Uh, one, two, three, four. And that would be enough for most of the math we can do. There's an arrow button that you can use on your calculator that will allow you to do this thing. Well, 1 times 1 times 1 equals 3, obviously. Uh, 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. And we're kind of familiar with 2 to the third because we've been doing cubes. And finally, 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. And 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. These are the smaller common cubes. And when we put a, uh, to do the one that we're going to do now, we have 3 squared. And we write it like this. Okay? And the cubic root of 3 squared is 3. Okay? So it's just saying that backwards. More on that, although that won't be on the test. And so here we go. Um, v equals 4 over 3 r cubed, and V equals 36, oops, there's the pi, sometimes I forget that, equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Let's get rid of the pi so we don't waste time. 4 over here, 3 over here, you see I'm cross multiplying in my head, and this turns into 9. 3 times 9 is 27 equals r cubed. There it is. r equals 3 because I put the cubic root over both of them. And the idea is the same as the square root. But we're much more concerned with square roots than we are with cubic roots. Okay, I'm reaching the limits of what this video player can do. Let me turn this off and I'll come back to you.